Welcome, everyone, to The Everything Show, episode 594. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212, and I am with Scott. What's up, Scott? I'm just ahead today. What's up, Steampunk Star Raisin? Uh, Ambrostreet.com. Hello. Hanging out at Starbucks. What's up, Gloria? Hello. What's up, Billy? Still concerned about this envelope that says Rick. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Chris? Hey, what's up? What's up, Ray? I just heard this class was going to be all action tonight. Yes. Well, here's the thing, okay? Um, Steampunk's going to tell us what massive interviews he's got on his channel, which I'm going to share. Yeah. So why, why share those on Google Plus? Why don't you tell us about it, Steampunk? Yeah, I, I interviewed the co-creator, uh, uh, the original writer who created the character of Deadpool, uh, uh, Fabia uh, Nietzietza. And, uh, that was a fun interview, and you can tell from his personality. He Fabian, right? Or Fab Fab sorry, there we go again, mispronouncing it again. Uh, uh, Fabian Nietzietza, um, you can tell from um, his personality in the interview that he incorporated a lot of his personality traits into the Deadpool. Nice. Because uh, I, I mispronounced his name, and I, I left. That part of the interview in, I mean, he requested that I do that because he said it's more fun that way. But, uh, and he made fun of me, and rightfully so, and then he educated me in how to pronounce the name correctly. But I left that in there because I figured it'd be fun, you know, for people to watch. And it'd be more real and more raw. And, there you go. And so I interviewed him, and I had some, um, my iPhone crashed, and then I wasn't able to do as long an interview. So it's only two and a half minutes, but it's pretty straight to the point interview. And I also interviewed uh, uh, Tony Todd, and uh, the audio quality is not that be uh, not the best, but you can still understand what he's saying. Uh, I wasn't used to having a camera person, and it was my fault. I I should have told her to get in close. If you have an iPhone with no boom mic, you really need to get in. Right. Or you pick up yeah. a lot. Of noise. So yeah. I did I did the best I could to clean up the audio. The audio is not the best of quality, but. You still make out what he was saying, and I talked to him about uh, Tony Todd about his role in my favorite episode of Deep Space Nine, The Visitor, where he played an adult James in the show. And then the and a lot of people have rated that their favorite episode of Deep Space Nine. And the um, he talked about his motivation and how um, uh, his aunt's death was a, was an inspiration and influence. It allowed him to be more emotional and more sad with that character. And then, uh, and then I talked to him about uh, uh, season two of The Flash with Zoom, but he told me that he was not allowed to give out any spoilers and he couldn't really say anything about that. Right. Well, I, I want you to know, Steampunk, that it's funny how you should interview him because we just got massive word. And Chris, do you, Chris L., do you mind reading this article? Can I send it to you? I don't think you can hear me. Chris? Chris so, Christopher? I don't know if he's there. All right, so then I'll give it to Billy. Whoa, what? <laughs> Somebody. This I said I would read it. Oh, you re I didn't hear you. I didn't hear okay, so, Ed, Chris, read that article. Okay. Sorry, that might have been my microphone cutting out or yes. something. Yes. Okay. So it says, Star, Star Trek album... Of sorry, Star Trek alum Tony Todd is on the shortlist for CBS's revival series. Oh, Star Trek! You may oh, have just interviewed the freaking captain of the next show. Or something. Oh, well, I hope so. Maybe that oh. will go viral. We gotta get Daniel in here. He's gonna flip out. I, I mean, I wish I had known. I would have asked him about that, but I didn't Jesus. know about that. I can't believe that, man. He may I'm... be big on there. Like, I mean, I don't know if he's going to be captain or if he's going to be. It says here that he might be a series regular. Dude, oh, I'm surprised God. Daniel didn't tell us about that. He's a really good me. actor. He did a really good job at playing at all Joe Cisco. Wow. Like, how did, how, did this, how did this slip by Daniel? To what us? is happening? Damn, oh. Daniel. <laughs> well, that Daniel, is not Daniel. Actually, Daniel did. Daniel did. Daniel did call me yesterday. Yeah, he did. And Daniel did tell me that he was rumored to be on the new Star Trek series. 
I'm like, well, that I think it just broke was... today, bro. Okay. I, I think it just broke today. So well, fair enough. Well, then that's lucky for me. Hopefully, that'll attract more attention to the interview that I just did last Sunday. Great job, man. Tony Todd's I awesome. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Great job. You scored with that. I'd say and, the only and thing. The creator of Deadpool too. I mean, that's great. Yeah. 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 The only thing yeah, I, well, that's, like, what I've, that's what I've learned to do. I, I've been doing less cosplay interviews and more uh, trying to focus more on on industry and celebrity interviews. Because like, my most popular interview is John Ross Bowie from Big Bang Theory. That got like sixty thousand views. Oh my god! So, so that's that's Damn. why I've been trying to. I was like, yeah, the creator of Deadpool or co-creator of Deadpool. I got to interview him, Tony Todd. He played two different characters in Deep Space Nine. He played Adult Jake Sisko, and he played uh, uh, Warwick's brother. Yeah, I remember more. more I was uh, going to say brother. he was the voice of the Fallen in Transformers. Like, oh, okay, okay. I, I mean, I didn't like that movie, but... He's also he's been there's in Daniel, there's Daniel, Daniel. Damn, yeah. Daniel. You're sleeping on the yeah. job, man, Danny. You didn't let us know about the thing that dropped. <laughs> the news that <laughs> Very angry. No. Yeah, sorry about that. I, uh, you know, I had a problem with my internet. You know, my visa changed password, and my 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 internet provider couldn't access my visa. Yes. So they cut me off, those bastards. But I'm back uh, now. Hey, all right. Woo! Well, I will, I will say this: Tony Todd, as a person, he's a really nice guy. He seems to be very grateful of his fans. I will say that. Right. So that's great news. I mean, we don't know if he's a captain or if he's a first so, officer or uh, whatever, right? Well, I think he'd make a great captain considering mm -hmm. that he's older now. So he'd make Why a not, captain. man? Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Now, Steampunk, do you, how do you do your interviews? I know that – do you just ask him for an interview or do you have to have like a pass or something or a badge? Well, I, I have a press badge. I, I have a press badge. Which is, uh, actually, I still have my press badge. Did it? Here's my press badge from Comic Expo. How do, you, uh, how do you get a press badge? Well, you have to have a website or a hit, I have amberstreet.com, which goes to my YouTube channel. I'm using the YouTube channel as hosting. You have to have a website and a history. You have to have like a portfolio history and you have to apply for it. Um, I've had press badges for several conventions for years. I've got press credentials at several conventions in Southern California. And so I'm kind of grandfathered in, but initially when I first applied for a press badge, I had to give them a link to my website, show them an example of my work, show them an example of people that I've interviewed. Uh, they didn't just approve me like that. Yeah, they didn't think they were. Yeah. yeah, and some of the bigger conventions, I still can't get a press badge to. I usually, like uh, San Diego Comic-Con, deny mm -hmm. me for press, because they get a lot of people applying for press. Right. And they have a minimal requirement. I got an insider too. They have a minimal requirement. You got to have ten thousand subscribers on your YouTube channel to even be considered. And I, I only have like five hundred. Yeah, so, I, was just, I was just curious because that's that's really cool. No, 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 thank you. Yeah, like um, I did press last year at Star Wars Celebration. If you want to see what that was like? You'll have to go on my YouTube channel and search for Star Wars Celebration. That was a wonderful convention. I was really surprised at Lucas Arts approved me as press um and i could go to star wars celebration this year but i don't have the funding to go to london which is where it's at this year right the, um and uh yeah long beach comic expo long beach comic con i do press uh weird con i've done press steampunk symposium i've done press uh let's see what else uh, anime expo i've been able to get a professional badge it's not free but cheaper than a normal badge nice uh, so i've done i've done a lot of conventions as press and a lot of conventions like when i went to california one a week and a half ago i just tell me that convention and just interviewed people and cool. and um but uh gallifrey one actually snuck in and i i interviewed uh nave uh mcintosh that's who cool played, who played the lizard that's true, that's true yeah. She played Lizard Woman, and yeah, and I was asking her about questions about season ten, but she had no information. I asked right. her, "Is your character going to return in season 10? And she was right. like, "I hope so." You, you can you can look up the interview if you're curious. 
She's like, I hope so. I've been out of work. She actually said she was out of work for a while. Wow. We have some news, uh, Chris L., that today uh, a few things happened. Do you want to talk about any of that stuff? Or? Are you talking about the Marvel stuff? What? Uh, whatever. Choose something. Yeah. All right. I'll go with the Marvel one first because I think that was probably the biggest thing. Okay. Uh, so uh, there was a there was a superhero podcast that uh, was doing their cast. Uh, I think yesterday or today. Oh. And, um, one of the things that they had a really interesting picture was the new Marvel business card that Disney is appointing to their executives to work with Marvel and whatnot. The interesting thing about it was it was all of the most of the characters from. Mm-hmm either Guardians of the Galaxy or the Avengers and their respective series, but Ooh. every character was in their movie gear. It was oh, nice. definitely them from the movie, right? On the card was Spider-Man. Oh, what did his costume look like? It looks, they're saying that it's, it looks like a traditional Spider-Man suit, but there's enough of a difference for, for them to say, this is probably what he's going to look like in the movie. Now, to just give a basic description of it, think of just the normal Spider-Man suit. The webbing that goes through the suit is black. The spider is really big on the chest. And the black black parts around the eyes are just a little bit darker. Basically, the suit in a nutshell. And it looks, if this is what he's going to look like, which I'm pretty much convinced it is, it looks fantastic. And I think that, sorry, I think that uh, that's probably what we're going to get in the war. Do you have a link to it? I had it, yeah. Let me see if I can find it. Because I'm curious. Yeah. Let me see if I can get it. Speaking of Marvel, again, I will be in three days meeting Chris Hemsworth. At yes! Wizard, oh. Wizard World at uh, Wizard World Ohio. Oh, cool! So that's gonna be fun. Oh, this and uh, if video. anybody if anybody watches uh, Agents of Shield, I will also be meeting Chloe Bennett, who plays uh, Sky. Oh. Oh. oh, nice! I I haven't met Chris. You sent it to me. I, think oh. Chris sent me. Well, I, I sent it to you before. Remember? Yes. I'm trying to get into my thing. Hold on. I haven't yes. met Tony Bennett in person, but I did do some close-up video of her when she was at Long Beach Comic Con last year. Because uh, she was, I was trying to interview Chloe Bennett at, uh, at Long Beach Comic Con last year, but she was too swamped. She had a long line of fans wanting to get her autograph, and so uh, I went to the press conference for the Girl Scouts, and uh, Chloe Bennett was there uh, giving merit badges. <laughs> They had like a superhero merit badge for Girl Scouts. I didn't know that at the time until then. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool, pretty sentimental. So I did video of Chloe Bennett. I was like maybe 12 feet away from her, but I can't, can't say I met her because I didn't actually talk to her. Hmm. Billy, I sent you that on Facebook. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Holy crap. If that's what it looks like, it looks sick. Like awesome. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been saying, I mean, who's ever, who's ever designing the shooting costumes for the last few movies? Um, because the, the costumes, the new Ant-Man, Giant-Man costume, the um, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and Black Panther costumes all look fantastic. So who's, right. ever, who's ever doing those at Marvel is, or at Disney, whatever you want to say, is doing a fantastic job. Dude, Doctor Strange looks so good. He looks unbelievable. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't think they'd pull that off, but it was great. Okay, I just got a took a picture of it, so I'm gonna go into there and then their screen share it. So, cool. yeah, I think I think also the the Spider Man movie that's coming out in 2017 that'll be the first good Spider Man movie in almost a decade. All right, now yeah. this is a little blurry, guys. I think, but let me just see if I could do this screen share it. Okay. So that's going to be it, basically, right? Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. sweet. It's a little, a little blurry, I'm sorry. but Yeah, but still, we can make out enough of it. Uh... Yeah, it, it looks, looks like an Pretty similar to the comic book. Interesting. I think it's pretty cool. 
pretty much. Yeah, and I, th- I think, it, you know, this will be a good Spider-Man movie because, I mean, the, the, when the Spider-Man movie comes out and Spider-Man being in Civil War, it, it'll definitely make the character more interesting because he's interacting with, with the rest of the MCU. Right. And that's why I don't think the Spider-Man movie will suck. And hopefully they'll stick with this Spider-Man. Yeah. Like I grow, Spider-Man will grow as the actor grows. It's yeah. Just, uh, Hey. The, that, the, drag, the Dragon movies. Well, who, which, side, which side is Spider-Man on? Is he on a, a Team Iron Man or team Captain America? I believe he's on Iron Man's side and then he goes to Cap's side, I think. Oh, okay. I don't know. Chris, is that uh, right or something? Or no? Nobody, like, I, I think you're right, but as far as as far as that or any being on any side, it's not confirmed if he's even on a side at all. Okay. Or he, it, it's not even confirmed if he's going to have a big role. Um, in in this movie, I think he's gonna have a decent role, but I I wouldn't be surprised if he might just show up for a couple of yeah, scenes. Yeah. Could he like yeah. be watching them battling, taking pictures of the bugle, and then he be. just gets in the middle of fighting with both of them? It could be, yeah. Right. I mean, the rumor I heard is he only has a cameo. No, they said it was more than that. Right. Like they they actually came out and because someone asked them that, and they're like, no, it's more than a cameo. They yeah. Said he's Movie. He might be selling out towards the end of the film. Probably like 15 minutes, right? 15, 20 minutes, maybe. That's what I'm thinking, r- around there. Yeah, because you got to remember in, talk sense to him. in movie time, 10, 15 minutes is a pretty long time. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't sound long, but right. when, you're, when you've got a two-hour movie, 10, 15 minutes, that's a long time. As Peter Parker, he'll probably be like three and a half minutes or four minutes. Something. They'll probably have Mr. Mar- uh, Marissa Tomei as Aunt May probably in it a little bit, maybe. And then, and then maybe something happens. He gets snubbed. He wants to be Avengers or something. So he tries to prove himself while they're fighting each other to join the Avengers, and they're like, "Get out of here!" Like that's like or something. Maybe I don't know. Honestly, to tell you the truth, the two characters that I'm looking forward to the most. Is or excuse me, are um, Black Panther, and if they're really doing Ant Man, Giant Man, yeah, I want to see how they do that. Yeah, that because, yeah, Black Panther looks looks badass from the trailer. Yeah. yeah. Now, is Captain Marvel showing up in this movie? The female no. Captain Marvel? No. No. Okay. And Black Panther is also my favorite character from Marvel Zombies. He was just he, he was like even when his chips were down, he was still a badass. Mm. I, I really liked Black Panther and Marvel Zombies. I don't know. Well, if my it. my co-host actually wants to talk about that in detail. She has something very important to say. So she, probably in like about a week or so, I'm gonna get her on. We're gonna do a nice guest on that. So. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll stop talking about it. I was just going to explain no, why. You can talk. No, you can talk. She, but she has something to add to it, yeah. Well, you know, it's just that the – I met, I read – I didn't actually buy it, but I went to, like, Barnes & Noble a few years ago, <laughs> read the actual graphic novel, the whole first Marvel Zombies miniseries. Yeah. And he becomes a zombie, but he retains his goodness for some reason. He retains his identity. And he uh, he loses right. one of his legs, and he's on crutches, but he still kicks ass, even though he has only one leg. And right. I, I, really liked, uh, <laughs> I really liked Black Panther and Marvel Zombies. He just was like, you know, like, man, he didn't give up even with one leg. So right. I just – True. Uh, right. All right. So what else do we have, Chris? We have a lot more stuff, I think, right? Hey, check it out. We got a we got a Back to the Future reboot starring The Rock and um. No, there is no Back to the Future reboot. What? Well, Brian mm-hmm. just gave it to me. There's no there's no Back to the Future reboot. No. Nope. I get Chris. You talking about the uh, the Spaceballs thing? Yeah, it's just Spaceballs thing. Yeah, the, I guess there was a couple of posters today released of like announcement posters for the sequel to Spaceballs. You want to share them? Do you have the pictures of them or no? I don't know how to share on on Zoom. I and mean, every time I've ever tried, I couldn't do it. Okay, let me let me try to get it. Because I know I've been having issues with Google Hangouts sharing stuff on there too. Okay, 
Uh, it, it wasn't anything crazy. It was just dark or dark helmets. A uh, helmet. Right. On the poster with like stuff in it. Um. I, I gotta say, I'm not really like excited for that. I'm kind of, you know, I, I liked it better when it was just a joke. All right, so I'm gonna do a screen share now of it. Wait. Hold on. So wait, they said that these posters appeared in New York. Where in New York? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, here. Wait, hold on. I got a screen share. Bow chicken wow wow. Hold on. Bow chicken wow wow chicken wow wow. All right, tell me if you see this. Oh yes. Yeah. See that? Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, there's been rumors for years that they're going to do a Spaceballs 2 movie, and I, I wonder if it'll actually happen. Yeah, this is, it's actually happening now. I, even Mel Brooks said he's doing hmm. it. So. so Mel Brooks nice. is going to be producing it or not? I believe he's going to be working on it, yeah. Hearing it again. Well, it's gone. Because, well, you know, because a lot of people were saying that, you know, if he's going to do Spaceballs 2 at all, he's got to do it pretty soon. He's like almost 80 years old. Yeah. So. I think well, it's hilarious that his son uh, does like lectures about how to survive a, a potential zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What else you got, Chris? That was all I had. What about, uh, was there anything else today or something else I thought? Batman, Batman, Superman? Yeah, uh, Chris, now, let's explain this to me, right? The, the rated R thing? Yeah. It's nonsense. It's not happening. Yeah. Well, here's, here's what SourceFed Nerd said about the rated R thing on Batman vs. Superman. Is that the, the movie's going to be PG-13 in the theaters. The, there'll be a director's cut. That's yeah, 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 yeah. The, the news today was that they're, they're going to release the rated R or something. They're not going to do that because they'd be limiting their, their audience. They don't want yeah, to. nobody wants that. Nobody's going to go see a rated R Batman. Well, listen, this is going to be the trend for the next few months. Everything's going to come out like, oh, could it be rated R because of Deadpool? Could it be rated R because of Deadpool? Listen, it worked for Deadpool. It doesn't mean it's not going to work for everything. For any other things. Right. So. It's down to work for Wolverine, though, isn't it? Well, I don't think it should be, really. But, yeah. with Wolverine, to tell you the truth. I really don't think that it would matter. Because right. let's be honest, the, the problems with Wolverine movies have not been because they're rated PG-13. It's been their stories. Oh, their stories yeah. I would agree. I would awesome. agree. So yeah. a rated R version of those stories, but okay, maybe you add a little bit of blood. Oh, you know, it doesn't say oh. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't like the last two Wolverine movies. The stories were kind of uh, we, crappy. We, yeah. And, and the last, the last Wolverine movie, I, I have a big gripe about the last Wolverine movie. The last Wolverine movie made no sense to me. It contradicted what they had already established in the previous Wolverine. That adamantium has to be kept at a boiling point because once it cools, it becomes virtually indestructible. But then he loses his claws, which contradicts what they had just said well, in the previous. Well, he lost movie. his claws because the sword that Silver Samurai was using was heated up. Right. Yeah, they but I would still don't imagine that you know adamantium. Yeah. You know, that's like steel hitting steel. It wouldn't, still, yeah. Still shouldn't cut the claws. But I, I had an issue with it that he lost his claws at all. I was sitting there yeah. like, okay, cool. Like there goes Wolverine's defining factor. I'm pretty sure they just deem our Origins Wolverine non-canon now, anyways. Um, well, yeah, they rebooted everything with X-Men: Days of Future Past, so it's like that never really happened. Yeah. Also, I didn't. I mean, I liked the Wolverine movie, the newer one, but uh, I hated the Silver Samurai was like a robot. Yeah, he did look very robotic. He didn't literally look like. They made him a robot. They made Shredder a robot in Ninja Turtles. I'm tired of robots. I'm tired yeah. of. You know, I'm tired of superhero movies fighting faceless armies of robots yeah. in Ultron or faceless aliens in yeah. the first Avengers. It's like it's like they're comic. It's like they're Americanizing the 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 villains. I want characters. Notice the villains. If they're robots, they'll destroy them. But yet, if, if they're an actual guy, it's like, oh, we fired, but yet we were about two feet from each other. But I missed them entirely. 
That's why Winter Soldier was so good. It had characters. Yeah. You know what was oh. funny about the end of Avengers 2, or the, the first Avengers, was that it was almost like a blatant, not, I don't want to say ripoff, but it was almost blatantly or exactly like the ending of Transformers Dark of the Moon. It was hilarious. I yeah. remember, <laughs> I was like, I've seen this before, recently. Where was it? And then I was like, oh, wait, yeah, that other movie. The new Ninja Turtles looks like Dark of the Moon. It does. Mm-hmm. I, ne- I never saw Dark Side Transformers Dark Side of the Moon. It looked really bad. Um, Joe and Chris, by the way, uh, I, fr- I don't know if I-, I forgot to tell you, I think, but I posted my Q&A video where you guys asked me questions. Oh, we did? Yeah. Yep. It's not me. Um, I didn't like Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver to her, so I couldn't get out at all. Mm. I wasn't a big fan of Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. I didn't like the way Galactus was depicted as a storm. Yeah, yeah that was kind of dumb. That, that was, was terrible. Terrible. Yeah. That's I like how they tried to give him the classic Galactus look in the cloud, and it was like... Yeah. That nice. wasn't... That sucked. I don't like it. Silver Surfer's hardly in it. For the whole movie, like, it was like, you know, you had little bits and pieces there. So. Yeah, I mean, it had potential to be really good, but they just... The story was just... Like, yeah. And oh, Galactus. let's say let's all agree on this much. It was better than this last Fantastic Four reboot movie. Oh, that, was that is true. That's true. That's true. The last Fantastic yeah, Four I mean, reboot it movie may not have been award winning. Yeah. I, I, well, I saw the last Fantastic Four movie. I would say it was very mediocre. Uh, Wait, did I see the uh, movie? The Ray Fantastic won. Four movie? Yeah, I saw it. it was, no, Ray. Ray. Oh, what well, one? The, 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 the last the, one. The, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. I didn't like it at all. Yeah. Nobody liked that piece of garbage. Fantastic Four. Oh, um, I don't mean... Yeah, they, they, they want to do something decent, and they have to go and rewrite it all, and, and I'm bringing a time with new ideas, but it's getting repetitive now. Yeah, I know. Mm. You know what I always thought would have been cool? Yeah, at least this was just for the uh, for the cartoons. Have Loretta Swit as the voice of Sue Storm. Ooh. I don't know why, but I always thought she would have been good for the voiceover for Sue Storm. As right. long as your hair is not looking like a straw wig every few yeah, minutes. Exactly. Know, like, it's, like like I'm, Mara. it's like this Marvel Smells Wanted. Oh. I can't see that kicking off. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get going, guys. But any special announcement now? We're still doing Who Idol 3, right? And what is this new thing, Billy? Um. Apparently, we're, uh, uh, Gloria is one in, on her channel, maybe, or here. I don't know. It's apparently, Hoovy and Rap Battles. <laughs> good luck with that, because I, I, I am uh, good, good luck, Gloria. I don't know about, I don't know about that though, because we're still trying to get people for Who Idol Three, and it's like nobody's Listen, just, picking it, up what we're throwing rap, down. Rap can be a category in it, I guess. Just there you as go. Long as you get it in there. That's good. Okay, oh. I, I'm probably gonna make a video on my YouTube channel about it to announce it or something. Yeah. That was just one of the spitballs, Billy. It was to, to give you an idea of what we could add if you could like work into Yeah. Final three. You want any more ways to think we come a show? Right. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. On that note, take care. Bye for now.